you know, every now and then I come across the opportunity to use the expression phenomenal woman. And it occurs when I engage in a female who in fact are engaged in so many projects, activities, programs, and endeavors and are successful at it, so I have termed that phenomenal. Well, I'm very, very happy today to be able to interview a, a young lady who uniquely qualifies and unequivocally qualifies to be called a phenomenal woman. And that young lady is none other than Cherie Stevens. And let me tell you about Cherie. I mean, I don't, you know, she's worse than Habersham. I don't see how she does all that she does, you know, civically, uh, educationally, uh, economically, uh, in the community and what have you. But I want to come out to the shoe saying that she is absolutely phenomenal. I'm very, very proud of her. I'm impressed with her. You know, less than a month ago, she was in Macon, France. Uh, you know, she now, and she's now a phenomenal international woman. So, so I'm just happy to have uh, Miss Cherise with us, Cherise Stevens. So, Cherise, uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from and your history and how you got to where you are now. Well, all I can say, Mr. Alice, with that introduction, I'm already crying. <laughs> but listen, I am a local Maconite. I was raised mostly by my grandmother, Liza Stevens. Mm -hmm. And I remember when my mom got pregnant with her, they moved to the big city of Macon because she wanted all the opportunities she could have for her firstborn grandchild. And she's taught me to be strong, self-reliant, and a lot of things you mentioned, I learned that from my grandmother. I was uh, educated in public high school here. I went off to college at Georgia College. I've had many trainings, even going to Harvard for a little bit <laughs> and do some things. Uh, but currently, um, one of my biggest achievements is I am the director of the Office of Small Business Affairs. When Mayor Lester Miller came into office, one of his first things that he did was to appoint uh, Dr. Henry Ficklin, as well as myself, as the department heads. I'm the first woman to ever in the history of making big consolidated government to hold this position. So I, I... I'm humbled for this opportunity to kind of reach out in my community and help the best way that I can. Okay, well, let's just, since you began with it, let's elaborate a little bit on what your, that department does, the Office of Small and Minority Business Affairs for the city of Mesa. Yes, so a lot of communities are trying to create what we did. When they had the consolidated government, um, they created this office. And this office is really just to bring equity in the procurement processes for Macon Bibb County. We work and do a lot of technical assistance for uh, Black and minority-owned businesses so they can compete with this contract. And through the tenure that I've had, I've had a lot of first-timers that actually got contracts or some type of support uh, with their business being supported through Macon Bibb County. We help them from everything from getting their Secretary of State to eventually getting their vendor application um, taken care of. And then during my tenure, we've worked with our Spanish population, our Pakistani. You, you mentioned the international. A lot of people don't know Macon Bibb County is a hub for a lot of international businesses. And we're missing out on an opportunity by not having a, an open big tent. So my office has really worked really hard to kind of bring everybody to the fold. My assistant is bilingual. Uh, my intern is coming in. He speaks about three different languages. So we're trying to cover in many bases and I'm even going to get babble myself so I, can, <laughs> so I can learn some more languages. But our ultimate goal is the economic well-being of Macon Bibb County. We all know the stats. We all know the poverty. But this is the time, no matter what you're doing to be all hands in to try to break this generational um, poverty curse that we have here in Macon Bibb County. And that means that, you know, there are a lot of people who are in business and who want to go into business. And let me hasten to say and tell the, the viewing and the listening public 
that, you know, it's nothing wrong with wanting to be in the business and nothing wrong with having the entrepreneurial spirit. But what I always tell everybody, uh, Sharice, is that, you know, identify the resources. There's a lot of help out there. So if, in fact, you're in business or you're interested in business and you want to do business uh, with the government, then there's a vehicle through the small, the Office of Small and Minority Business Affairs to make that happen. And Sharice has been very open and very engaged you know, in trying to help businesses. And then one thing you can do, and then if you're a small minority, majority, or what have you, you can register to become a vendor, That's you right. know, with the county. So you can get with her later on, you know, to see what that process involves. And congratulations on your success. Thank uh, you so much. And I'm so, and I'm so proud to say that all the services that we have are free of charge and not just what we do. A lot of our partners, they have no charge or nominal charges for their uh, resources and their educational classes. So I just want to encourage you, if you don't know the answer, it's okay to ask. I would rather you ask now than later on uh, someone uh, reserve your name, take your business name or you don't have right what you need for your taxes or just whatever. We want to do what we can so you can have a successful and sustainable uh, business. Outstanding. So I told you all we were phenomenal because we're going to move. We're going to segue. You know, I kind of looked up how to spell that. That's kind of interesting the way it spells. Uh, we're going to <laughs> segue <laughs> into you create making. Now, let me tell you something. I got this friend, Sharice and I, have this friend uh, whose name is Michael Hill. And then he has involved his daughters in the cycling uh, yes. initiative that Sharice has founded and started along with other things. But I, let me quickly say, and we talked about this with Michael the other week, young people need something to do. That's right. Everybody has a button. And let me tell you something. Mr. Sharice Stevens have really pushed that positive button in our young people by creating and managing and drawing you create making. Talk about that a little bit. Well, uh, you create making is my my passion and my heart. Um, a few years back in 2019, it was a uh, it was just a series of our young black men getting killed. It was a um, a young boy that my son actually knew in West Macon. And I just wanted to do something about it. I didn't have money. I didn't have resources. But I found a building. In a week's time, I had a key. We used reduced paint. We got it up and running. That was our first center. Now we're three centers in. Um, and we started a bike team with no bikes. Uh, and we started with kids that uh, when I grew up, Miss Alice, honey, I... I jumped off of cliffs with bikes and we built bikes. I still got scars on my knees and bikes and a bike was independent for us. And a lot of our kids don't get a chance to go outside. They have never owned a bike. So we wanted to change that. In this short period of time, we are our national award-winning uh, program. Our kids are winning national awards. Our coaches are some of the most certified in the nation. Um, and we just took our kids on two summer adventures. Every, every year we do a summer adventure. So we went to Tulsa. So they got a chance to see Black Wall Street. They went to Indianapolis, which a lot of our kids actually took their first plane ride. And they learned more about Major Taylor because we are a Major Taylor chapter. And a lot of people don't know this yet. So this is uh, breaking news for you, Miss Alice. But in 2024, our kids are going to France. They're going to see Tour de France. Wow. So little kids that had not rode bikes, we're going to be doing our first international trip in 2024. So they'll see these professional cyclists and it's a whole new world. So you create making is all about kids creating their future. They give us feedback on things they want to do. Currently right now, we have a film summer camp going on. And when I went in there and I was trying to speak to them, they wanted me to be quiet because they're learning about film careers. They're producing their own public service announcement. So they didn't want to hear from Ms. Cherise. They wanted to get to work. So these kids are guiding us. It's not us telling them what they want to do. They're telling us. And it has been 
a, a blessing in my life. Okay, now are you at capacity? Because I'm sure that there are young people out there who want to be involved in what you are doing. You know, and then like I tell people, everybody has a button. And we yes. need to understand that, particularly about kids, because we got a lot of problems in our community. But if we could find something in which they are interested, and that's what Michael talked about, is after school program that will offer, you know, yes. various activities and programs and hobbies and talents, you know, to these young people. So they won't just go astray. You know, once you get them involved in something in which they are interested, then they will certainly stay stay the course. So I congratulate yes. you on that. And, and I want to say, and I, and, I, and I want to say, we have plenty of room. And what's unique about our program is that we provide everything for the kids. We know the high poverty rates. We know a lot of different things. So we erase a lot of those barriers. So if you ever see our kids on a bike. They're kitted out. They have um, cycling shoes. They have a top line bikes, top line helmets. I mean, you you would think they were doing Tour de France. So if anybody's interested, they can uh, message us on our Ukraine Making Facebook page. They can call us at 478-747-7920. We are going to have a school-based program. I work a lot with Dr. Julia Danley. She is amazing. We had our first summer camp with the Build Board of Education. We're working with Mayor uh, Patrick and Warren Robbins to have a satellite office there. So it's a lot going on and we want more kids because trust me, Ms. Alice, after doing 50 miles, you ain't thinking about doing nothing but either eating or sleeping. Can you think about it? <laughs> I understand. I understand. So but we, that's outstanding. You know, you know, maybe Maybe we can get a real strong bike so I can get on and, and do some <laughs> and do some riding. Well, anyway, we that's you. a we got you covered. program, and I congratulate you again on what you're doing. I congratulate you again on what you're doing with uh, You Create Macon, and I want you to keep up the good work as it relates to that. Thank you, sir. It, it says way I looked that word up the other day. <laughs> into uh, phase three of what something in which you are involved. That's the coalition of African-American businesses, uh, which is a fairly new organization, you know, that you played a significant role in creating. And let me, let me say something. People overlook the expression that there is strength in unity. Yes. You know, that, 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 that applies in all this spiritually, academically, civically, and certainly economically. And that's why I kind of started the Black Pages, you know, to create some economic unity. So we've started this organization that, uh, that's open to anybody who's in business or uh, any minority who's in business or, or who wants to go into business. So let's just talk a little bit about the coalition of uh, African-American businesses. Yeah, so at the beginning, I talked about my, my job with the Office of Small Business Affairs, and it's really open to any minority, can be woman, the whole nine yards. But we know the history of Macon Bibb County. We know the redlining. We know in, in the entire region, the disproportionate for income wages. So this coalition is really extra support for these African-American businesses to be sustainable. So it's even more technical assistance, it's more unity, uh, it's more project driven. And it's not just us, we are part of a statewide, actually regional wide black chambers of uh, Georgia system. And we're not trying to recreate the wheel. What, one of the beauties that we're trying to do, we're looking at other chambers and other organizations similar to us and really bridging on what we can do here in Macon Bibb County. So our goal is not to say we're meeting in which we do have weekly calls and I wanna encourage any small businesses to join us. We have a great team. Um, Brittany is amazing. Brittany Perry, I'm gonna give her a high five. She's amazing. But uh, if you'd like us at uh, Central Georgia Coalition African-American Businesses on Facebook and message us, we can get you a form for um, becoming a member. And we want to encourage you to become a member. But I think one of the most important things about this is that we're going to gauge our success on how many projects 
how many businesses that are being sustainable. COVID has been tough on all businesses, but it has been horrendous for small black owned businesses. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Well, you know, we can't slide into August without talking about Black Business Month, you know, so, and I know that the coalition is, um, will be doing some planning on trying to create some meaningful activities for Black Business Month. So, you know, talk about a little bit about that, not only as it relates to the August being named Black Business Month, but what can we, uh, what can the community do? One thing I thought about, I'll say that right quickly because I don't want to forget it. You know, I, I, I think that we ought to make ourselves, uh, you know, remind ourselves to spend maybe $50 a week more with African-American businesses. Think about the impact that would have. But August is Black Business Month, and uh, I'm sure that uh, the big office of smaller minority businesses is going to be doing something. The Central Georgia Coalition of African-American Businesses is going to be doing something. And those of you who are in business and would like to attend our networking mixer, it's going to be August the 8th at yeah. Serenity uh, Lounge on Poplar Street. And then, you know, give, uh, go to the uh, um, uh, group page and message us if you would like to get an invitation. So talk about August is Black Business Month. Yes. Hey. So, so listen, we are powered by the Making Middle Georgia Black Pages. And a lot, a lot of communities are trying to do something similar to Mr. Alice because we don't realize what a resource that you have been and guiding us to know our purchasing power and to support these um, Black-owned businesses. So in 2004, Mr. Jordan uh, created this Black Business Month. And it's a way of celebrating unsung heroes, which we do, um, to support small businesses and to share resources. So last year was our first, and it was amazing. We got an opportunity to highlight people who laid the groundwork. You know, a lot of people don't know our history of Cotton Avenue and just so many things that are going on. Ruth Hartley Mosley, we got so many unsung heroes in our community. And I think even letting our young people know that you come from good stock that you can achieve. Just imagine what they achieved with all they had to go through. So you have good stock enough to, to make it happen. So this will be our second year. We'll have a proclamation for making Bibb County. We're gonna be supporting them through our Making Middle Georgia Black pages. We're gonna have our um, Black Business Bingo, which you'll be able to go and support these businesses and win great prizes through our Office of Small Business Affairs. And then the last day, we will have our luncheon and we're gonna be celebrating some of these unsung heroes that have really made an impact in our community. And one of them, he don't know all we're gonna do, but he has been uh, my mentor and um, he don't understand how um, he is breaking generational poverty in this community. So I ain't gonna say his name, but his initials A8. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> You're going to make me cry. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's amazing. And then the great thing about it is, again, this is not just us doing it. It's going to be celebrations all throughout the state. So we'll be able to support our uh, fellow organizations similar to us. And then they'll know what we're doing. Um, so this is going to be a, a, a a life-changing year uh, for the Central Georgia Coalition of African-American Businesses. I can see it. I can see it too. And then, you know, everything starts with an idea. And Sharice and I came up with the idea that it would uh, not to compete with a chamber or anything like that, but to kind of garner those of us who are interested in business, got similar interests, similar desires, similar goals, similar initiatives, similar needs, to kind of come together and form this organization. And if you're interested in it, you know, you can call me. You can just call the Black Pages office at 478-464-0074 and ask for me and I will forward you more information on it. Uh, Sharice has already given a shout out to uh, Miss Brittany Briscoe Perry who's the administrator for the organization. She has done a phenomenal job. 
her information is on uh, the group page, Central Georgia Coalition of African American Businesses. So, I mean, it's just phenomenal, but I want to thank you again because you my you my mentor. I want to be like you. You know what I'm saying? But it really means you <laughs> and you know, you know, the re reason she giggling like that is she recently got engaged, you know what I'm saying? So so congratulations on that. Thank but you. I, I just want to say again that you know, okay, okay, let me ask you this right quick. How can we talk about the Central Georgia Coalition of uh, African American Business, how to join? And then if you're interested in, you know, the small and office of small and minority business affairs, what's that email? Yes. So you can uh, either you can send it to my assistant. Her name is Elizabeth Amina. And I'm saying her name because in the next few years, you're going to hear her name a lot. She graduated from Westland. She is a powerhouse. I'm so excited to have her on our team. But it's E. L, I'm sorry, E A L M E N A at makingbib.us. If you're interested in getting a vendor application or to set up an appointment, just email us and we'll work with you. Um, we're actually going to be coming up before the end of the year of our success stories. And to be quite honest, we didn't realize how many small businesses, small black owned businesses, we have helped in a short period of time. And even with the nonprofits um, to get their stuff together for the MVP, um, some other funded opportunities. So um, I'm blessed to have this position. I'm blessed to be able to feed my soul by doing good in a community that I love because I love making middle Georgia. And um, I, I just want to be part of the solution. Absolutely. That's what you are. You are part of the solution. So how about you create make a tell us how to get in, in touch with that again? Yes. So our new website by uh, Mr. Terry Armstrong. He's a, another uh, a minority owned business. He is redoing our website that should be up in about two more weeks. But they can also reach us at uh, ucratemaking at gmail.com. We have a couple different locations, one in Pleasant Hill and our main location that is in uh, at, uh, Carroll Creighton Park, formerly Central City Park. But um, if you're interested, we have middle and high schoolers. It's no charge. Um, we provide a lot of the things for the kids. We just want kids to have some basic coordination because they will have to bike. But before you know it, a kid will be coming home and say, Mom, I did 10 miles. And I literally have kids now begging to do 60 miles on a bike. We're doing one love in about 45 days. And these kids are training because they want to be in a 60 mile club. So, wow. <laughs> wow. so yeah, so we just tell them, please um, just contact us. There's a lot of good going in the community. And one thing about Ukraine making kids who don't like football or basketball or whatever, Biking is something that most kids can do, and we train them to do it safely. So we just want to encourage anybody out there, listen to Mr. At, uh, Alex Habersham. It's a call to action. Let's get these kids. <laughs> Let's get these kids busy and uh, and getting them the resources they need. I'm glad you said that because I didn't tell them the name of this show. So I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you said it for me. But this is a call to action. I'm your host, Alex Habersham, interviewing Ms. Cherie Stevens, who holds significant position and who have been engaged in significant initiative, uh, measurable, and providing a measurable results in her initiative program and activities. So I want to thank you again. And uh, like she said, you know, there are so many resources out there. So we talked about the resources for small and minority businesses in which she's involved. We talked about a very, very phenomenal resource as it relates to address many of the problems that we are having with our kids by letting them join you, create, making, and I'm sure, you know, I don't know of a kid, you know, it's not many kids who are not interested in biking. She said, now, do you have bikes too? Yes, and listen, you know, we got a MVP grant, so we're going to be providing bikes to kids, so it's not just kids on, I'm telling you, it's not just kids on this team, 
Um, biking gives kids freedom. 25% uh, of our population does not have driver's license. So what's happening is our kids are in one neighborhood and they're not able to expand and see other things. That's why with Ukraine Make It, we travel so much because you want kids to see is more things in this, in this world versus two streets. So um, yes, yeah, so we're putting everything together. So we'll be giving out bikes, not just during Christmas time, but you'll be seeing, I'll be partnering with the Making Middle Georgia pay, uh, Black Pages to get some bikes out and maybe even have one of our bike giveaways at one of your uh, black owned businesses. So we, we're gonna work it out. That's what I was saying. Now, if anybody, is there a need for volunteers as it relates to any of the initiative in which you are involved? Yeah, so when we have the bike giveaway, we will need volunteers. I also need volunteers. We just got about four pallets of bikes and I need volunteers to help me put them together. A lot of them are for our kindergarten and smaller kids. So. Uh, I need volunteers for that. And then I need volunteers that don't mind getting on a bike. You know, I, I bike with our kids, but I'm a 30 miler, maybe 40 if I, before I have a heart attack. Our kids are pushing 60. Some want to do an actual 100. So I do need volunteers that don't mind riding um, and riding with these kids. But other than that, I just feel blessed um, for how the community is supporting us. This is a call to action. I'm your host, Alex Habersham, having interviewed. I am the interviewer. You know, I had to remind Miss Stevens of that. <laughs> Calling me talking about, I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about that. I said, wait a minute, you the interviewee. <laughs> <laughs> but I am Alex Habersham, the interviewer um, for a call to action. And uh, my guest has been uh, the phenomenal woman. Miss Cherie Stevens, and, and so one we didn't even talk about Macon France. You know, just tell us you got 30 seconds to talk about that. Yeah, so you know, I do a lot of international um, outreach. We had our first international summit last year, so we have a relationship with all our sister cities. So, yes, we went to Macon, France. We'll be going to Portugal, Japan, and we're in my ultimate goal before I leave this position at some point is to go to Ghana because that's one of our sister cities. So You'll be hearing some more updates and we'll be, as we have in these relationships, have delegations that will go with us. So our goal is to support our international connections. That is so outstanding. This is a call to action. I'm your host, Alex Habersham. Thank you again, Cherise, for all you do. Have a great day. www.makingblackpages.com Get ready, Central Georgia. This is Alex Habersham, publisher of the Making Middle Georgia Black Pages. I'm happy to inform the community, particularly business owners, that we're working on a new edition of the Making Middle Georgia Black Pages and Resource Guide. Coming soon.